All right guys, so I'm making this video to uh, tell you what to do as soon as you buy a new Chinese mini skid steer or any uh, of the Chinese, you know, excavators or anything like that so that you can do all the maintenance items required before you put it to real work. That way you don't have blown hydraulic lines or ungreased fittings or, uh, you know, overheating issues or whatever. So I've done everything. This, this machine has seven hours on it. I bought it with two hours on it from a guy who purchased from the dealer and then decided he didn't want it. And I've done quite a bit to make it, uh, you know, work ready. So we'll just go through every single item. You gotta replace the grease cirques, um, change the hydraulic oil and the hydraulic filter, change the engine oil, engine filter, or oil filter, and uh, let's see, uh, get rid of all the rub points on the hydraulic hoses. I'll show all that in detail here in a second, how I did that. <clears throat> and then also wire your cooling fan to run all the time. All right, I'll show you how I did that as well. So that should summarize the list of stuff that I've done. So let's get into it. So the very first thing is simple, replace the grease cirques. So when I purchased the machine, all of these grease cirques were just those flush needle style. I, replaced, I purchased a pack of metric grease cirques on Amazon. It was just a big variety pack, and I went through and I replaced every single grease cirque with the ball style here. It's kind of dirty, but you can see it. Because the machine comes with flush and um, nipple style. Like, these were nipple from the factory, and then there's our flush up there. So why not just make them all the same? All right, that's simple enough and easy enough to do. I think you can figure that one out. Um, and then, of course, grease them, because mine did not come greased. All right. Second thing, very important, is to get rid of all the rub points because this and, and zip tie all of the loose wires that are touching, you know, the engine and the exhaust and all the hot components of, the, of, of this area so they don't get burned through and, uh, you know, stop functioning because mine were melting. So, um, show you this rub point here. Like, for example, this hydraulic hose down here. Um goes to the hydraulic pump and it was the the machine vibrates and this hose already had like an eighth inch gash in it just from like two hours of running uh right here so i zip tied this piece of garden hose to it and greased it as well where it rubs back in here there's a bunch of wires get this light on back in here there's a bunch of wires i zip tied them all together and pulled them um off so they're not touching those metal hydraulic hoses and they're not touching um, as far as I can tell, not touching any of the engine, the hot engine, uh, you know, components. Like right there, there was a, what I think is a spark plug. A uh, spark plug wire was touching and rubbing on top on those uh, hard hydraulic lines, and it was getting uh, melted and rubbed up. There was some electrical back here that was getting melted as well. I just pulled and zip-tied it to parts of the frame over here, just to get it all off of that, because within 10 hours, those would have been burned through and blown up. All right, here's what I did for these here. These are very bad. You can see down in there how I've got a bunch of pieces of rubber hose zip-tied and greased up around my hydraulic hoses because those were rubbing, on, rubbing really bad when the bucket pivots up and down. All right, and uh, if I didn't mention it already, this is a CFG Industrial KRW232 skid steer, but this just goes for any, any equipment that you buy, um, you know, from China. All right, so that's, that's that, you know, uh, grease cirques, hydraulic hoses, you know, tidy up all the electrical lines. They're not touching anything. And then the next thing would be, uh, let's see, change all the, change the engine uh, oil and change the hydraulic oil. For the hydraulic oil, I used, it took five gallons um, of this right here. I bought it from Real King, AW46. That's what I've run it on for the past five hours, and it's been doing just fine. So I took five gallons of AW36, or 46, um, and you change that by putting it in over here on the west side of the machine. I also labeled it so I don't mess it up, you know, put gas on the right side. <clears throat> and then the filters, now this is important. The filter for the hydraulic oil is right here. It's easy to get to. I replaced it with a Napa 1551 maximum duty 
protection hydraulic filter. Just got that from Napa. Um, they're the only carrier around me, AutoZone and O'Reilly and all them don't have it. So I had to go to Napa. That's easy to replace, but then the oil, the actual engine oil filter is really difficult. You have to take all this off, undo all these connections here, and get back in the engine back in there on the right side and unscrew it. Now, my machine came with an extra one. Let's see if I can get this in focus. My machine came with this extra one. I purchased a, an identical one from Napa that's in there right now that you're not seeing, but this is the one it came with. I'll just get the measurements of it because I don't actually, I don't have the, like the Napa receipt with me right now. But you can see that there. It's like two and three quarter wide on the, you know, outside, outside. And it is. About two and five eighths tall, two and three quarter tall or so, top to bottom. All right, that's just how it looks. Anyway, the also the oil drain plug is back in there, and it took me at least an hour to unscrew the oil drain plug, and uh, at least an hour to unscrew, just unscrew the filter, and then like 30 minutes to put them back together after filling it up. And I used 10W30 to fill it back up. Um, hydraulic oil was AW46. I think I already said that though. The uh, you can check your oil with that uh, dipstick there for the engine, and you can check your hydraulic oil with this dipstick here. You can see I labeled all of it. All right, so that covers the the uh, engine oil and uh, the hydraulic oil change. Now what else? Oh, here's the final thing. So my machine. When I purchased it, the fan didn't turn on. The fan functions, um, but it didn't turn on. So what I did, like when I turned on the switch, when I got it hot, all that stuff, it's supposed to have a thermocouple right here. I mean, it does have a thermocouple right here. Right up here on top of the fan, there's a thermocouple with a wire coming to it. And then down here, there's like a thermocouple switch of some kind. I don't completely understand, but it had this plugged into it right here that was supposed to kick it on when it got hot. Well, I ran this I ran this machine for like 30 minutes out here, and it's like 96 degrees. Um, before I did all this, before I wired it up to run permanently, when the machine was on, and uh, the fan never kicked on, and it got to red. Like so, the hydraulic oil heated up real fast just for me moving dirt around. So what I did was, you can see here, this here is the the fan. Now for my fan, the white was the hot wire. I checked it with my multimeter, and I took this speaker wire. Or the 16 gauge uh, like automotive wire here, and I just cut the plug off of I cut the plug off of uh, you know the connection over here, and I wired it through the engine or not through the engine. I wired it up to the cab here, and there was an extra plug here for like a cab fan that was on a 10 amp fuse. This set back here was on a on a 15 amp fuse, so I just swapped the fuses around in the fuse box. And I just wired wire nutted them permanently so that when this machine turns on, so that's on. Okay, as soon as I turn the machine on, the fan turns on and it blows out. All right, that way it gets all the hot air out of the engine and all the, you know, can suck cool air in. So if this machine is turned on, then that fan is turned on because I'm not going to be operating this in the, in the cold. All right. All right. So I think that covers it. Um, yeah, I just, I just, there's no more thermocouple, no more switch. You know, my switch up here in the cab doesn't even turn the fan on anymore. So I just used that extra wire that was hanging down. If you wanted to, you know, put it in your optional cab, cab fan. And I just used that, swap the fuses and you know, made it so it ran all the time. So I think that's about it. Um, I hope this video helps. Uh, if you need to like translate when you're, when you're on these machines, you'll see that the manual and all the wires and stuff, they're all labeled, but they're labeled in Chinese. So for example, like this right here, you see these little white labels on them. Just download Google lens. That's Google lens, L E N S. And, uh, 
you can just hold your phone up to it and it'll translate it for you right there. That's how I figured out what all these little wires went to. All right. So I think that's about it. You know, change your grease circs, change your oil, uh, your engine oil and your hydraulic oil and the filters. Get rid of all the rub points on all the hydraulic hoses and, uh, or actually, or do something about the rub points. Do something about all the electrical lines that are going to get burned up by touching the exhaust and the and uh, the cylinders and the overhead valves and all that stuff. Um, and make your fan, make sure your fan works or add a fan to it. All right. I think that's that. Hope this video helped. And uh, thanks for watching.